Yeah, you heard the sound, meaning I'm capturing the screen now. And it, well, if you think about many people, they're visual learners and they cannot see you, but I am at that your website. And at the beginning, at the beginning, I am supposed to introduce you. So right now, they see you, the picture. And when I went to that website, I was completely amazed. I was blown away. I don't know. I mean, it's amazing. It's just a privilege to meet you in this virtual space and to talk to you. And I truly appreciate that. So, like, the best way would be if you could just maybe say a few words about yourself because there is no way I can give you an introduction that will be fair to you. It's amazing. So, Went from assistant to associate to full professor, and then sent to me. And uh, left, uh, you left academia. And uh, I've been working for JMS since 2018, organizing all the. And that was amazing when you said PhD in, I mean, from Columbia University. You didn't say PhD in what? It's in math education. Director of Mathematical Research at APC Bellmap for over 30 years. And it was in mathematics education. It's, it's really amazing the fact that you didn't even mention Mensa Society. Tell us about your Mensa stuff. Uh, 
To be honest, when I saw your resume, I realized that this interview is doomed because we would never move move beyond that introduction topic. It's amazing all that stuff that you have. It's just unbelievable. Everything you do is tremendous, tremendous discovery for me. Try us once. Well, look at that triathlons. It's just amazing. Like you swim in open waters and all that stuff. It's 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 unbelievable. Now, how many of us can uh, say something like that? So, look at vegetarianism. Vegetarianism. Okay, that's where the page I'm on now. And uh, now look at yoga. So how, how I mean, this is in uh, Sanskrit. What, you can read your uh, Sanskrit? You serious? This is, well, well, that's the reason why you are in men's society. It's not like, well, they invited me. I mean, I'm a member of Mensa Society. I want to be a member. I don't think I can. I have to <laughs> be qualified to be a member. Isn't that true? Well, yeah, let, let's let try to, you know, go back to the interview. Uh, I said, yeah, we have five questions out of 10 that we want to discuss. And the very first one is, uh, if you could give us 60 second uh, pitch uh, about uh, the organization you are in now. Wow, that was less than 60 seconds. You didn't give me time to, to pull on the screen. I have I, I was supposed to prepare some materials about your organization and show while you're talking. And uh, it's it's an amazing organization. Just tell them how it started and uh, the whole idea why the name Julia Robinson. Thank you. 
make the festival attractive to women and girls. And she was thinking about different uh, female mathematicians who would serve as role models. And uh, Julia Robinson, of course, uh, had already, you know, was deceased already, but she reached out to Julia Robinson's sister, uh, who was still alive and inquired about the possibility of naming the festival after her and her sister was delighted. Um, and then her sister was actually Julia Brown. And one of the things that she requested from Nancy at the time was that uh, to call the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival and not the Julia Robinson Math Festival because Julia Robinson really disliked the word math. She always liked to use the word mathematics. So that's why uh, we're called the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival. So now that one festival, that one event, originally Nancy thought, you know, let's do this once a year, let's do this one big festival where people come, you know, kids of all ages, you have different stations. In, a, in an open space and children go around and select an activity and interact with one facilitator at that station. Uh, let's do this once a year. But people in the, this was in the Bay Area, so people in the Bay Area began to see what was going on and said, wait a minute, I, I want to replicate that. I want to do that at my university. I want to do that at my school. So in 2008, there were two festivals, and then they kept going up. In 2019, we had about 120 festivals around the world, uh, universities, schools, churches, uh, you name it. I mean, we, we try to bring joy in the form of mathematics wherever we can. In fact, we also had a program named uh, Math on the Border, which, of course, COVID uh, shut down as it has many other things. And, uh, but it was uh, a program with um, other company minors who have been intercepted at the border that are awaiting trial. So these these minors do not have an adult with them, and uh, and the government has not been able to locate an adult who can be responsible for them. And uh, so the, these children are. In, in, in both a legal limbo and an exis existential limbo. I mean, it, it, uh, it is an extremely difficult situation. And there are some charities that provide uh, legal support and emotional support to these minors. And the Joey Robinson Mathematics Festival, uh, through a grant from the Sloan Foundation, created Math on the Border, which was uh, having activities with these uh, minors in just to, just to give them some joy. So, so the whole purpose, we were trying to inspire joy, bring joy in, in mathematics. Um, we've done, we were exploring with doing the U.S. Um, and so wherever we might be able to bring some joy through mathematics, then we try to do that. Well, thank you. And I want to move to the second one. I open on the screen uh, the list of questions. And the second was one of the goals of Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival is to inspire girls to learn math. Can you share your innovative approaches to engaging girls in learning math? That is so unlike competition. In competition, you have ninety percent boys, ten percent girls. It's very, very uneven. And in fact, the, the American Mathematical Society, who runs 
Thank you again for this explanation. I, while you were saying that, I was showing your website and activities that you have there, just incredible. And uh, the question was about like uh, the process. One of the questions that we had on the list, how do you guys come up with these amazing activities? What's your innovative approach? How do you really do it thinking out of box so it's amazing material that you provide there for free
people people who know about the human they know that the recognizing just by looking at them. By by our presentation of the problem. So we to show them to eat now and uh, board uh, uh, as our uh, activities back in January and his uh, he has done an amazing job at um, Draws you to it, and then you read, and you even more. Part, but we also have, and it's on the website, all the incubators. These are sessions, and we can open these doing These are sessions. People are saying, Oh, I have this problem, this problem, look at this problem. You know what? Let's create a problem in incubators. And then these problem incubator sessions. People are invited to bring their own problems. And uh, so we have one guest per session. So if you have a very nice problem that perhaps not, not too many people know, but you know it's a great problem, maybe you created the problem there. So, okay, fine. So you have Thank you. 
Thank you. We have uh, like two minutes left and two more questions. And one of one of them is, uh, I'll read it because it says we have a Vision 2121 gallery. We do have it. And I want to put your answer. What is your vision for the festival in that gallery? Well, thank you again for answering this. And uh, one more, the last question, we have one minute left. And that is, we would like to create a gallery with your resources, as well as to provide links to your online store to help you to increase reach. Are you open to ideas like that? Well, it's amazing that we just made it in 30 minutes as it's planned. It's exactly 12.30 now. But I want you to review this interview, both the audio and the video, which was recorded. I hope it was, I hope it was recorded. Yeah, it's still recording here. And, uh, and then we will you know think about maybe if needed we can do it in a better form in a better way but i want you to see how your resources which are amazing they're amazing there's no, it's not me talking to you you know yourself that they're great it's other people can come to your website and see how they can use it and and if you create that gallery with the, with your resources, because what's happening, like on your festivals, I watched many of your YouTube videos, and I should have shown them here now, but those are mostly like short videos, two minutes, where you capture basic uh, impressions, what other people got from it. But if people create their own records when they do it, and show how they do it, other people can learn and we can play it out together. So I don't want to talk too much about my side and about our project, but I wanted to mention the word Inompics, which stands for Innovation Olympics. And people, you know, started in Moscow. You hear my Russian accent, by the way, right? Well, oh, well, don't tell me you speak Russian now. 
<laughs> That's incredible. Well, you are a men's society person. <laughs> what can I do? But Uh, the actual uh, uh, and it's been, uh, the Russian community has been all the Russian communities. It's, it's, it's usually the Russian, the Indian, and North Carolina. Well, I think I think that in general, obviously, any nations there are people who really love mathematics and uh, obviously see the value of uh, transferring that knowledge to kids, but. Uh, here is a specific question I have. It's amazing. Your website, your personal website is absolutely incredible. And uh, I don't see, I mean, I understand it's based on uh, uh, just, you didn't design the software. It just, uh, did you do it yourself, that website? Well. If, if there's any way I can see that your website now, your art, is it online, your art? No, 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 your wife, your wife's art, you said she's an artist. Yeah, it's... Yes. What? Well... well. No, let me just mention the reason why I'm so excited to hear that your wife is an artist. Uh, because combining art and mathematics, it's been a dream for many. And of course, there is STEM and STEAM, and we have a gallery for STEM and STEAM. And uh, one way to play it out, and I call it, a game of ideas, but you may have heard uh, Hermann Hesse, the name of a German author, who wrote a book, who wrote a book called The Glass Beat Game, where he describes how people take pieces of art, music, poetry, and mathematics, and create beautiful compositions. And page number two, he says, sorry, I cannot give you a single example, 
but uh, the Yankees got Nobel Prize for that book in 1946. The book was written in 1943. So the, the website that we started, it started like that because it's a game of ideas. And it would be amazing to take your wife's art and uh, and combine with mathematics, like your mathematics. Like we have, we have the gallery of math. And the way I'm trying to teach it, it's to make fun, as you said. Everybody sees value in it. So let's say I go to that beginning algebra gallery and uh, and and there are there are examples where I'm trying to take kind of cool facts and turn them in math problems and then together we publish ebook where each each math is a cool pro uh, cool problem and uh, people come and what look that's the funny part that's how they learn i call it creative learning they can, can you hear that music playing so I clicked on the uh, post that that it says Mongolian Navy, and it shows a picture. It shows a picture of a boat going through water, and it says the landlocked country really has no need for a navy, yet they feel the need to at least have one. So the Mongolian Navy is one tugboat with a seven-man crew. But perhaps the saddest part is that only one of them knows how to swim. And and I turn it into a problem, math problem. The captain of Mongolian Navy tugboat earns three times as much as a sailor. How much each of them earn if the wages of all team is an equivalent of, and so on. So basically, a person comes and clicks the button. There is a button. Uh, the button that tells you use it as a template and they can change any numbers and create their own problem so and then uh, they cross check each other work and that's how they learn they call it creative learning so it would be would be amazing to have your wife's art that we can because you know the problems could be boring for the most of the people but if you put Cool art, people just come to see the cool art and listen to great music. And that's what we can do together. So would be, and by the way, this is a fundraising platform because uh, you can add links of uh, sponsors at the bottom and right here. And also, links of nonprofit organizations like i'm adding students veterans of america many of my students the most of them they're veterans and you're helping them to spread the war and save on online advertising so we want to try this model to raise support for your organization well we need to do that it's easy i already have some sponsors who will give you the sponsorship. And you know the big site called DonorsChoose.org where yeah, there is a big site called DonorsChoose.org where people come and give money to educational projects. And, and our site is SponsorsChoose.org. And the reason why, because I honestly believe that sponsorship you need to help them to help you the idea for this is when they give you support they are saving on online advertising they're making money by giving you support and that's what we want to try with your site to to see if we can really use it as a fundraising tool to uh, raise support for your project does it make sense Well, I will send you this. And by the way, 
the, like the first part when students uh, create their own problems it's project based learning e project based learning the second part when they add links of non profit organizations or small businesses this is uh, this is the uh, service learning learning a service to the community but everything all together could be also a game it's a reality role playing game where people who play that game save the world and how do they save it well think about the storyline that people in the future will develop amazing technology maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, uh, quantum computing whatever it is they will have to simulate the future where it's all going to because they need to find the path of optimum evolution and how do they know the models are correct well they simulate this very moment our interview and how do they know it's correct well they compare with the recordings and they can evaluate the model so by playing this little game it's a reality role playing game my students call me dr z so that's my role okay that's that's my name in that game it's not me it's another guy okay don't confuse me well the, and and uh, by recording all this you're helping them to calibrate their models and uh, and validate them so you're helping to save the world and again the storyline is designed in a very you know convoluted way if you think about threats you know how playing people who play uh, role playing games they have threats so you can have your threat about your everyday life game and i have my own and we put these pieces of puzzle each of them is a piece of puzzle digital you puzzle together text audio image and video and people come and they can offer you improvement you can click on mine and say hey we want to have uh, i mean better music or better image like your wife's images maybe they're amazing and that's what we want to find like uh, in different combinations you can create for instance you know to create a masterpiece you have to be a talent a genius well you can create a super masterpiece by combining masterpieces of art music and poetry and that will require genius of to finding right combination so sorry i was talking about my uh, project too much well no what basically let's let's think about this as a dry run let's review what we have and make it better okay but but it was absolutely crucial to record and post the first run the way it is because many people will use the system to abuse it and uh, make it uh, for their advantage well they don't understand that game how it really plays out that there are many many teams and those teams they record what not <laughs> record what's happening too it's not only my team is recording what i am doing now i am the single person team but there are other people and they are just in a different part of space time mind continue okay so and it's again don't take it seriously it's it's just a game of ideas so think about one idea space time mind continue and we can play it out and we are not arguing about and we don't fight about any ideas we just look at them and see for some people they make sense for some don't and i'll give you one example just recently i stumbled on a bunch of uh, uh, unbelievable information related to reincarnation the guy i and dr i i i uh so dr stenson Jan virginia 
Well, look at this. The guy, the guy felt as a failure because nobody was looking at his ideas. He had like 2,500 interviews and uh, at least half of them showed that there is reincarnation. And nobody would even look at it. I mean, that is unbelievable. And in our game, you get points for, you get open-mindedness points, you get points for trying something new, you get points for explanation, like, uh, was my explanation good? Or points for understanding. Everything is rated there. And who is going to rate? Well, people, like, if they listen to this video, they come and they give you points. We came up with a cool rating tool that you can put your own criteria and so on. So let me stop here because uh, I've been talking too much and I apologize for this. Uh, let's review what we have and instead of, and let's make it better. And let me, sh and let me show you really, my goal now at this moment is to prove that we can use it as a fundraising platform to, uh, to promote, you, to raise support for your organization. That's the goal. But I need your help here, your guidance. Okay. All right, excellent. Thank you very much again for this time. And I will send you a link shortly. Thank you. Sounds, sounds very good. And I look forward to our continued collaboration. Thank you. Me too. I appreciate that. This is unbelievable. Uh -huh. I could never guess that we'll go this way, but that is the reality. And by the way, the, my definition of reality, only things that are supposed to happen in real reality. But it's a long conversation. And I would like to learn your uh, amazing amazing approach which i have very little understanding of uh you know what you have that exposure and you learn sanskrit which is which is just unbe unbelievable so you will be my and think about this the guy wakes up and he's on the mission you know how kids playing the video games and yeah. and he's running you know he has to come and find the wise man and the wise man will give him a message what's the next step. So you are my wise man at this moment. Okay. No, 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 no. I, no, no way. Whatever. No, I came I, I came to you and to see how you know where you will send me. So I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Oh wow, that is unbelievable. Thanks. Bye bye. Well, guys, you've heard this. Amazing. I mean, nothing special about this game. You understand? The guy, Dr. Z, sitting in his reality box. You don't see it. We will show you that reality box later. The other person sits in a different reality box in his own place where he lives. And I would be interested to see it. Apparently, it's a farm. Okay. And, and you saw how the dialogue developed. And Dr. Z was trying to show you the right things, but obviously, <laughs> how does he know what screen to show you? And there were several mistakes he made, and I apologize for that. And it's just the beginning. And right here, I will send the link. Okay, it was supposed to be interview game. This is this is piece of puzzle number one, and it's version one point zero. And you come here, and you click button, use this template. That's it. You cannot hear music. You can change anything here. And when you're done, change the version. Put here 1.1 and put your initials. Then click button publish. Well, I'll do it for you. Okay. And look what happened. This one was created.
okay and just because we don't want to confuse anything well does it say yeah it's a version 1.1 so we'll just delete it that's it very easy to use this and amazing absolutely incredible opportunity to talk to this unbelievable person just think about it a phd in teaching mathematics can you beat that well dr z is teaching mathematics and he showed you his way to do it call it creative learning it's a little bit a mess here and those don't have uh, links yet but uh, he is the only one who does all that stuff and by the way here is sonia a girl from ukraine kiev ukraine and she's starting putting her stuff here Well, you cannot hear music anyways, so you will be disappointed. There was amazing music, but uh, this screen capturing software cannot capture it. So we will stop sharing here. 